Okay, this video is going to walk you through the setup process for GDOSA 2, which is a Dark Souls 2 um, graphical tweak mainly used for downsampling. Um, basically, allows you to take uh, really high resolutions and then downsample them to match your monitor resolution. And uh, that, from what I read, is a better way to kind of help with aliasing and uh, help with jaggies and stuff. Uh, there's probably a lot more information to it. Uh, go ahead and look it up if you want to. I'm not super familiar with it, but um, this is just a walkthrough of how to set it up. And also, I'm going to include uh, how to get SLI working properly on Dark Souls 2 uh, if you need it. Um, anyway, so this is not my software. This is just a walkthrough. The software is made by a guy named Peter Durante Tommen. He was the guy who made DS Fix for Dark Souls 1. Um, anyway, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through literally every step. So um, I'll put the uh, all the links in the description. But you're going to want to come here, click this. None of the other crap, all ads and stuff. Click that. And then, oh, come on. That stupid thing. Let's try that again. Oh, do it up here, please. Right, let's try again. Why? Okay, down here you're gonna uh, click open, and then uh, here's everything you need. You can extract all files to, and then you can make your own folder. Put in desktop if you want. That's what I did. What I did was is I made a folder on my desktop called DS Fix Two, extracted it to there. Once you extract it there, they're there very simple from this point on. What you want to do is come here to this guy right here, GDOSA2 or GDOSA2, I don't know how to pronounce it, whatever, you guys can see it. Open that up. It's going to give you, uh, this looks kind of daunting possibly if you're new to this kind of thing, but it's really not that hard. All you need to do here, this is your um, resolution that you're going to down sample. Um, you set this rule, these are just uh, basically uh, examples with the hashtags next to it here. Those are just examples of what types of resolutions you can use. Um, if you're going to just do 1080p, don't even bother because that's already what you're at. If you want to do a higher resolution, that's got to be something that matches the 16 by 9 aspect ratio or else you're going to get letterbox on vertical or horizontal letterbox and, you know, black bars. Um, an easy way to find out if you're trying to do a, your own resolution is um, divide the render height by the render width and you should get 0.5625 exactly. If you get anything else, uh, it's going to act weird, it's going to just be letterbox, and SLI is not going to work or work very well with it. So, anyway, so go ahead and change that. Um, I, mega resolutions like 5120 by 2880, you can do that. If you can handle it, I got two 780s, I couldn't handle that resolution. The highest I can handle is 3200 by 1800, um, but I was hitting 70, C, uh, 70 Celsius on my temps, and I was not comfortable with that. So, I went ahead and went with 2560 by 1440. If you go 2560 by 1600, you're going to get a uh, letterbox on the top and bottom. It's going to squish the screen down a little bit, and SLI won't work very well. So um, these resolutions are actually good ones that work really well. So you can use either you, you can use either one of these. Whatever one you decide on, you put right here, and you put right here. If you want 13 to 3200, you would just literally type in 3200 by 1800. And that's it. Of course, I'm not going to do that one because that one's just a little bit too taxing. More taxing than I like. That's it. Seems to be a good sweet spot for me. Okay, once you do that, you're done there. Go ahead and scroll down here. This is just asking what resolution you're going to downsample to. Basically, um, you want this to match your monitor. I'm 1920 by 1080 monitors. It's default, so that go ahead and leave it there. Um, this is for uh, VSync. I just left it unchanged. Just go ahead and leave that that way. Um, scaling. Uh, I noticed this didn't really make make much much of a difference. They say that Bicubic is a little bit more taxing. I use Bicubic, and I didn't see much difference on my on my hit on my GPUs. So it says Bicubic's better, so I went with Bicubic. Temperature wise, it wasn't changing my temps at all. Um, okay, this leaves false. And pretty much that is it for that. Okay, now and this is when you get to the anti-aliasing. Go ahead and set this as the highest you think your computer can handle. I put highest on 
bad uh, ambient uh, ambient occlusion I went ahead and put that as highest as well and the scaling I put that as high quality I think it even defaults to that now the bokeh depth of field um, leave this on as false it's a huge even says here it's a huge performance impact even I had two 780s I could barely handle it uh, it was just hugely taxing more so than increasing the resolution to the high levels um, so go ahead and give it a shot if you're you know you got some beast system like you know, three-way SLI or something, Titans or something like that. Um, otherwise, I would just avoid it. Uh, Post-processing, uh, go ahead and turn that on. I just hit true. I think it might even default to true. Um, you just literally type true here for it to be on or false for it to be off. And that's everything you need to worry about on here. The rest of this stuff, um, you can look into it. It's talking about mouse stuff. I don't even know. Um, you more than welcome to look into that if you want. So once you set the settings, resolution, stuff that you want, simply just save okay and then you can close it out next step come down here to the tool GD dosa to tool right click run as administrator okay go ahead yeah and then just you leave it as use whitelist and hit activate minimize that close it out bam you're done download the software extract it to here make those changes that I showed you that if you want to and then uh, save the changes and then I run as administrator in the tool and click uh, activate now you're set um, now the other thing I was going to mention is NVIDIA inspector this is a tab right here for it but if you don't have it uh, already it's very easy to download I'll include the link and the um, in the description as well but what you're going to want to do go ahead and hop on over to this guy here download it, it should auto download after a few seconds it'll pop up go ahead and download that uh, install it I already have it so I'm not going to but you go ahead and open or save get it somewhere wherever you want to save it once it's there open it up go to this little tool guy here uh, go here type in Dark Souls click on Dark Souls 2. When I first did this, I did this on accident. I didn't even realize it was going to activate SLI. Up to this point, SLI does not work really at all for Dark Souls 2. I didn't even hit apply change. I just came here, looked around, and closed it. And SLI worked beautifully as long as you're at the right resolutions. If your resolution is at the 16 by 9 one I talked about, either 5120 by 2880, 2560 by 1440, 3200 by 1800 or simply 1080p 1920 by 1080 those resolutions work wonderfully with SLI if you use anything else SLI is uh, basically doesn't even work it's strange anyway so go ahead and come here I would just go ahead and apply changes anyway don't even change anything just bring it up click apply changes close it out close it out now once you do that there's one last strange little step that I've noticed and this is a weird thing I can't get it to work any other way um, come on open up alright go ahead and go open up Dark Souls 2 okay and I have the SLI indicator the little visual indicator there on You'll notice at the top of the screen it's talking about down sampling. Um, once you get into the game, you can actually click the plus sign, just simply tap the plus sign, and it'll bring up everything that you have done. If you see it there at the top, you got down sampling, the resolution I set it at to what your actual resolution is. Um, you can't really see it, but it anti aliasing um, enabled, post processing, uh, depth of field, that's a bokeh, depth of field, disabled, and my ambient occlusion. I'll go ahead and let you know what you have run in there. And I have my two um, 780 GP1 and GPU2. Um, core clock usually doesn't even go above that. Now, one thing you're going to notice, and um, I haven't really ran around with this much, but you see the SLI profile, it scales beautifully. Solid, it does about 95% or so. Now you'll notice right away there's some weird, weird gra graphical glitches here and that flickering there in the distance. If you get that, you may get that. I mean, systems are so varied. Uh, what the only way I can get this to stop is by going into my settings, changing. Oh, very important. 
once you do this uh, the GDOSA 2 and you want to downsample you have to come into the in-game video settings and change your resolutions whatever you change the resolution in the GDOSA 2 settings whatever you change it to will show up in your in-game video settings so if you did you know 3200 by 1800 that would show up right here in your resolution options uh, that's why you can put whatever you want in. If you put in some funky resolution, it's going to give you black bars, it's going to be squished or stretched, and it's not going to run well, and the SLI will suck. So anyway, set the resolution as the one you want. At this point, I have to move it back to this, which I'm trying to get rid of that shimmering. Set it back to 1920 by 1080, and it's going to ask you, hey, is this good? you like these? Yes, I do. You see my uh, SLI there took a hit, 10, uh, 1920 by 1080. For some reason, SLI doesn't really work that great on that one, but 3200 by 1800 beautifully and 2560 by 1440 beautifully. Okay, now go back into video settings, change your resolution back to the one that you want to downsample from, back out, tell them yes, I want to stick with this one, and the shimmering is gone. Why that works, I don't know, but it does. You'll notice, again, this is a, a brand new thing that was just released yesterday, the GDOSA 2 thing. You're going to notice in the sky, you know your skybox looks a little glitchy. I don't think it normally looks like that. Anyway, so let's go ahead and run around for a minute. Um, so I got a 1080p monitor. I'm downsampling from 2560 by 1400. Um, I have all those other features turned on. And as you can see, of course, it's a YouTube video. So you're not going to be able to um, appreciate the 60 frames per second um, because YouTube is stupid and only runs at 30 frames a second no matter what. So this is beautifully smooth on my screen. It's going to look choppy like some 30 frames per second Xbox One or PS4 crap. Um, but you can look at my on-screen display there at the top of the screen and notice um, my temps, nice and cool. Core um, clock isn't even overclocking. Um, here's my frames per second locked. CPU is only 24% and RAM, barely using any RAM. Temps, nice and cool. So you can probably up this if you have a powerful system to 3200 by 1800. I just like things running cooler. Um, so anyway, uh, that is about it, really. Uh, run smooth, SLI, as you can see, just beautifully. I mean, it's got to be about 90% scaling, which is really good. I didn't know I mean, that there was an SL pro profile even released, but without that uh, NVIDIA uh, uh, inspector, and the SLI does nothing. You will get nothing if you go in there. There might be other ways to get SLI to work for Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 2, but this way uh, works really well. And you didn't have to change anything. You just got to open it up, type in Dark Souls 2 in the Dropbox, open it up, apply changes, and close. Don't even change anything, uh, and then you'll get nice scaling and SLI. And. Uh, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and let me know if this works for you and also uh, what rig you're running the game on. Alright, thanks.